to you, show you the different pieces, and then that will give you an idea of what you would need to, if you built one. So this is the, the scanner that uh, I think they call it the fourth, it's similar to what they call the fourth generation um, do-it-yourself scanner that if you go to uh, uh, DIY book scanner you, uh, into the forum you'll find instructions for doing something similar to this. So um, the main pieces are, let me get, actually can someone plug it in for me? Get on um, so when you, so what you have to be able to do is, uh, is put a book in. Yeah, is it plugged in over there? Well, he's using his laptop. Yeah, it's okay. The laptop won't There's die. a plug over here for the laptop. Okay, good. Anyone want to plug the laptop? So, so I've got, first of all, I've got a book down here, and it's open to 90 degrees. Um, I'll turn on the light so we can see it better. So, it's set at a 90 degree angle, and, uh, Actually, there's doing some tests online. It looks like you might actually get less glare if you go to a 120 degree angle. But regardless, um, the plan for this one was 90 degrees. And then you create what they call the platen. A platen is just a. In, if you looked it up in the dictionary, it'd say something about a flattening device. But in our case, it's two pieces of glass glued to some wooden. Uh, triangles, and they come down much like a photocopy machine glass would be flat. The book lays inside of it, and then the cameras uh, are mounted to be able to take a picture perfectly this way and this way. Um, and depending upon your book size, you might want to adjust this so that you've got your camera pointed just in the right spot. Um, then, um, obviously the platen's heavy and you want to be able to adjust it um, and with, for thin books and thick books. So it's made to kind of not have a special spot, but instead just to go up and down. And if the book is thinner or thinner, you actually have to do some adjustments. And so the book holder is designed to be to accommodate larger and smaller books, okay, and paperbacks or just uh, magazines would be, you know, tight closed. And then I tighten this on the side. And then as you're going through the book, you'll have, you'll be moving left and right. So this has to be able to slide back and forth. So it's all on a frame. Uh, you can put just one light up, but two lights gives you a little bit more uh, dispersion and even light. Uh, I put my lights up an extra two feet higher than they than the standard recommendation, just because I wanted uh, a little bit better dispersal and a little bit less uh, glare. Um, and then these wires. So we'll talk about that stuff in a minute. How how you want to do your your capturing, but. When it comes to the overall design of the scanner itself, this is just one common way that people use. Um, I used to have a counterweight on the arm uh, uh, so that when I lifted it up and down, it would not be quite feel quite so heavy. And uh, and I took that off when I did some other uh, design changes, and I ended up you know not missing it too much. Um, the camera arms. Some of the designs you see, they're just, uh, they might be on like an adjustable uh, gooseneck for a microphone, and those kind of tremor a little bit, so people haven't really been liking those. And the original designs just have one piece of wood here, and a piece of wood here, without one here, and those kind of shake a little bit. So these are built out of a nicer wood, they're poplar, rather than just the pine two by fours. So you might find that, that uh, if you use nicer wood or uh, semi-hardwood, you'll get uh, a better result. Some people make them out of metal too. So um, I just thought it'd be good if we looked at a, a bunch of pictures I just downloaded from the do-it-yourself scanner website and kind of talked about how how these guys, how other uh, other plans so that you guys can think of how you might want to design your own. 
The picture on the left is, uh, um, he just clamps it down. Uh, he, I think this, this lifts up like this. And uh, you see how well, it kind of swivel, swivels up like this. And then he flips the book around to get the picture on the other side. Um, you could also mount a camera here, but a lot of people just have one camera, so they do it that way. If you look at this picture on the left, or excuse me, on the right. Uh, here is camera stationary, and that whole thing on top, the plastic thing, rocks back and forth. So he'll take one picture, rock it over, take another picture, flip it to uh, turn the page, and then keep going back and forth. Um, well, this is the simplest design, right? It's just a 90 degree uh, piece of uh, paperboard with probably some felt on it. You can't see it well in the picture, but it's got a piece of glass. They just lays on top of that, snaps a picture, flips it over. You know, you can do a simpler design like this, but you end up getting stuck in post -pro in the processing post processing part because unless your book's in pretty much the same spot, your cropping is going to be difficult because a lot of the programs are just don't do that as automated as you'd like. Um, this is a good method if you're not doing thick books. Um, you know, if you're just doing magazines. You know, he's got it, so you just lift up the book, you know, flip the page, put it back down. And that's got the two camera method too. It helps if you've got the same camera. That way your focal lengths are all the same and that you can set the same zoom level and things like that. This guy took apart his scanner and uh, uh, recreated it upside down here. Here's a horizontal method that's kind of interesting. This. Uh, that part on the right uh, rotates, and uh, he just pushes his book up against it, takes a picture, and then flips, and then rotates the end. I don't know exactly where the fulcrum is, but it, uh, he says it works really well. Um, this one's a decent idea. I have to admit, I don't like it that much. I mean, he's, he has two different cameras, which is kind of troublesome. And then, you know, you got to undo this every time you take another picture with the book. So, um, and then it doesn't put weight, in, you know, you want to have even pressure against the whole length of the book so that you uh, get the platen nicely against the page because you can tell if it's not there all the way. And this is just someone who's got a design similar to mine but has metal supports. And people complain of glare. I haven't seen a lot of glare on mine, but they paint it flat black to reduce the, gear, the glare. Putting the lights on the sides like this, oh, this is a different one. Um, so people make, make them this way, and they use memory foam on the bottom. So, and the memory foam doesn't uh, jump around a lot, so it's really easy to just turn the page and put it back down, turn the page and put it back down. And since it takes a little while to get from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, things tend to stay pretty even. This one's set up to be like in a suitcase. It's got a like a handle on one side. All right, more of the same. Uh, I don't have mine set up to go directly to my computer. Some people use software that transfers the image automatically. All right, if you have a lot of money, you can buy the $35,000 and it, you know, the one in the bottom right, 35,000, it turns the pages for you, and you know, you just put the book in there, close the thing, and, and you're done. And I don't know what it spits out. It must spit out a PDF, but um, I don't know what all the software has. Okay, so those are that's the building. All right, so second, you got to get cameras. So let's say you decide to do a single camera. Um, all you really need to do is get a camera, but with a, with an external, uh, they call it a, uh, you know, like an external switch. Um, they call it a shutter uh, uh, release. Release, thank you. Even though it's not always a shutter you're releasing. So the, um, the shutter releases for the Nikons work pretty easy. It's just a, you just close up the, um, it's just like closing the circuit. You know, you, it doesn't require power or anything like that. Um, the rest of them uh, tend to require something fancy. Uh, but uh, Canon uh, 
has an option that is from a third party where you can use a, a hacked firmware called CHDK and there's a core code called SDM. Uh, and that's what I use on mine and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, uh, I guess in a minute. First, uh, let's talk about uh, lights. So when you're taking a photograph with a standard camera, if you're using it indoor or you're taking a picture of something non-standard, the camera can get confused and not know what light you're using. Usually people have their point and shoot camera set to auto white balance, that's AWB, right? So if, uh, if you leave it on auto white balance, your, your, your pages are going to come out all yellow because it's going to think that you're using fluorescent lights. So when you, uh, like in this setup, I have incandescent lights, which is, you know, like the standard light bulb with a little filament inside. Um, and I, of course, leave it on. And uh, when, I, when I turn on my cameras, I set them to incandescent. Otherwise, the white will be wrong. Uh, some people use LEDs, but they're obviously expensive. Um, and uh, fluorescent lights tend to not work as well. I'm not sure why I didn't test it. I'm just basing it on what I've read. So um, uh, you always need a power strip uh, to kind of hook on the back because you're going to be using a lot of plugs and stuff. So make sure you think about that. Um, I got a question. How yeah. do you power the camera if you're running like thousands of exposures in an afternoon? Yeah. So that, that's a good question. Uh, repeat the question. So he asked, question how do you power your camera? Yeah. So a lot of cameras, including the cameras I'm using, have an external power supply that you can buy. And uh, the one for my camera is about 15 bucks, but I don't own it. What I do is, you know, I can't do more than about one book at a time because I've got 500 pages. Or, you know, I take 500 pictures. Uh, I take 250 pictures, 125 with each camera. So it turns out to work out about right. And I have to recharge before the next time. Um, the, there are uh, off-brand chargers, too, where you can make your own, but um, the, since I'm using older cameras, it's kind of it's pretty cheap to get them. To get them. I just haven't bought them yet. So um, I happen to have two Canon PowerShot SD750s around because my wife and I both had them when you know, we bought them 15 years ago when they first came out. And, so there's, uh, they're both running CHDK, and, um, and I made a homemade trigger. The, the, the CHDK software is a, uh, it's the, well, the cameras are set up so that if the card is locked, it will look for a firmware update on the card. And instead of a firmware update, what CHDK does is they put a firmware on there that will just run and then when you turn off the camera, nothing was really installed onto the, into the camera's firmware, it was just running the application to try to update. So, um, so I, I run that on both the cameras and then uh, built into the software of CHDK, you could say, well, what do I want the trigger to do? And the trigger is, uh, well, so there's a micro US, or sorry, a mini USB plug on the side of the camera, and if it's receiving power, you know, the five volts it would get from USB, then it receives that as a signal. So if you you could tell it to either uh, one button is focus, second button is take the picture, or one you know click the button or hold the button once, and then it'll take the picture after autofocusing, or you know di different things. So I have it set to just take the picture. Question. Did Go ahead. you fabricate this or buy it? The USB trigger part. I, I fabricated it. I'll show you how I did it. It's really easy. Um, so there's really good documentation on CHDK and there's a really active Yahoo group, which if you're interested, you should join because they'll answer your questions right away. Um, now, uh, SDM is called Stereo Data Maker. So it's a fork of the CHDK software, which is set up to, uh, to work with multiple cameras. You see, CHDK is, you know, you can program it to do lots of different things, but it's complicated. So instead, there's somebody who wanted to be, to be able to take photos um, synchronously and uh, be able to have the zooms sync together and all sorts of other functions like that. 
So if you uh, if you're interested in in using the custom firmware, which that's what I tried first, and I actually kind of struggled with it, so I ended up just going to the CHDK, which works fine. Uh, and there are some tools. You see, CHDK has to be able to run on your Canon, of course. So um, it there's a different BIOS for uh, there's a different firmware for every single uh, camera. So you have to make sure you pick the right one, and there are several revisions of each one. So uh, somebody made a, uh, this software called Stick, and there's another one called Assist, and those will, um, one installs CHDK and the other one installs SDM to a 4 gig SD card. If you use bigger than 4 gigs, you have to, it's, you have other problems because you have to have more than one partition. It's just, it gets complicated. So just get a 4 gig SD card and install um, um, the firmware on it. So the trigger, the trigger is killer simple, right? All you have to do is take a standard USB cable, strip it open, get to the red cable, which is of course positive, and you put a switch in the middle of it. And it's, it's the standard five volts, I think we were talking about it being 200 milliamps or something like that, just whatever the standard power is. It won't power your camera or keep it charged, but when you hit the button, it receives a signal to take the, to take the image. For my cameras, I set it up so that the um, I got the power source and then a switch that controls the two that are running in parallel to each other. Uh, okay, so now software step three, right? Okay, so everybody in here has a preference, right? I mean, some of you like Linux and some. Like whatever, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. But if you like simpler and you have a little more money, of course you have to go to Windows or you go to Windows Solution. But they're also very good. You, you can do it all in Windows for near free uh, if you're willing to to use the command line interface to do some of your work. Okay. okay you guys probably know whatever one of these things are, but I'm just going to tell you. Renaming a file is giving it a new name, right? Cropping it is bringing it down so you don't have all of the other fluff, the, the brown background and everything. Dewarping is, uh, or de-skewing, right? That's when you take a picture of the page and it looks like a parallelogram. So you have to kind of straighten it out. Hopefully you do the best job you can in making that not happen, but you know, when you bring down the paper, sometimes it'll, when you bring down the platen, sometimes it'll crunch the paper a little bit. So you have to be able to rotate too. And I grouped that again, I guess, with dewarp. But you got to be able to adjust the colors um, because you might not get the white you want. Despeckling, and then if you're going to, you know, a 